What's good, YouTube? This is my quick advertisement for my website, analysisprogram.com. Make sure you go to the website, check it out, and subscribe to the email so that way you can get the latest newsletter without having to check every day. It sends you right when new content on there, so you don't have to check every day. Subscribe to the email and check out the website. New content is going to be on there every week. We're going to cover the whole NBA draft, but today we're going to talk about the Nicholas Batum and Portland, Charlotte Hornets trade. This trade don't really matter that much to me. It's big for the Blazers because he, he was making $12 million a year, and he's a pivotal piece to what they do because he just allows pick and rolls, switch pick and rolls because his defense, and he can become another ball handler for your team. And he's a decent outside shooter and a decent slasher, and he can see over the defense and make it easy for his team because he's just so tall and he can put the ball on the floor and find open guys, whether it's on the pick and roll or just seeing on top of the defense. He is a versatile player, but he never reaches full potential. But with this trade, I want to take on the Lance Stevenson trade because it plays a part into this trade to me because both of these teams are not complete. The Blazers with this trade, Nola Bonley, I'm a fan of his. He's a two-way player. He can protect the paint. He can rebound. He's a, sp a floor spacer from the three-point line to the mid-range. We didn't see that much of him in the Charlotte Hornets, but right now he just needs to be developed. And Terry Stotts has developed over Marcus Aldridge, Damian Lillard, and Nicholas Batum into great, decent defenders and all-around players because he made the Marcus want to get to the three-point line. He expanded Damian Lillard's game. He put Nicholas Batum into places to succeed. And that's hard to do as a coach. So they got the right coach to bring out the best and Nola Bonley, but is they going to throw him into the fire? Because we don't know. I think Lamarcus Aldridge is leaving because of this trade and what Nicholas Vatoon leaving. Unless they get another big piece in return for Nicholas Vatoon, they, they trade him and get somebody bigger or somebody better. This trade hurts the chances of Portland keeping Lamarcus Aldridge because Damian Lillard, Nicholas Vatoon, and Lamarcus Aldridge and Matthews was the core and with Matthews down with the, the torrent Achilles and Nicholas Vatoon out the door, now they're going to have to find another piece to make LaMarcus Aldridge happy. And we got to talk about Damian Lillard, too, because he can be out of here, too, because he on his last couple years of a rookie deal. And we already know they're going to have to pay him a lot of money because he's a multiple-time All-Star. He's clutch, and he steps up in the playoffs, and he steps up in the regular season. He can take over games, and he demand double teams, and he makes the whole players around him better because his ability to collapse the defense, keep everybody involved while still being a scoring threat from the paint and from the three-point line. But this trade is a trade that I don't pay too much into because we still got to see what happens. Back to the Lance Stevenson trade. The Lance Stevenson trade, this is a better fit because Lance Stevenson is a ball handler that likes to over-dribble. He's a better fit for the Clippers because they got the floor spacing with Blake, JJ, Chris Paul. They can all shoot, and he can be able to ball hand and get everybody involved, and he can just be a spot-up shooter. They marginalize his role. This player for the Hornets is a better fit because he's a ball handler that don't need the ball. They Lance. Lance and Kimball Walker both need the ball, so it wasn't a good fit. They, they should have realized that before they even made the trade, the, the sign Lance Stevenson. They both need the ball to be effective. Now, Nick Platoon is a role player that does a versatile things. So he don't need the ball. They, the ball can stay in Kimball Walker hands, but they can also run it through Nicholas Batum to get some high pick and roll and some pick and roll action to kick it out to shooters and seal on top of the defense and kick to the paint, drive and kick. So he's another ball handler that don't need the ball. They can put him in plays to make him effective, and he's a decent spot up shooter, and he can still create for others attacking the paint. And it gives the floor spacing for Al Jefferson because he's a decent shooter because Al Jefferson – he, they clog up the paint against the Charlotte Hornets because Marvin Williams, Michael Kidd, Gilkers, Kimball Walker, and Lance Stevenson wasn't notable shooters. They wasn't respectable shooters. They were just clogging up the paint for Al Jefferson. He couldn't go nowhere in the paint because they can just trap him and clog it, and he couldn't kick it out to nowhere because Kimball and them can't shoot reliably. And this trade, I still got to see it develop for both sides because right now on paper, this trade doesn't help a team like the Blazers because, yes, they got Aaron Aflalo. They can put him at the three, and they can just put Jerry Henderson at the two, but I'd rather have Nicholas Batum than those two players. So, and with the Hornets, 
it doesn't really solve their problems either because he does do a whole lot for the team and he does better role than Lance will. So it improved them. There was almost a playoff team, but that's in the East. So they can be an almost playoff team, but they're still going to be a first round exit. Even last year, if they would have made the playoff. You knew they was going home early. This trade leaves them in the same field. Nicholas Batum ain't going to elevate them to a playoff team because he's just not that type of franchise changing player like he was in Portland. Him on the court was great. It made him more matchup, made him more play style wise better, but it didn't make him a 50 win team. It didn't like one Nicholas Batum not going to make you a 50 win team. So I don't think this trade does really that much for either team. I like it on the Hornets because they do need a player like Nicholas Batum, but I'm only saying that because these teams got to keep building because these trades benefits both teams, but we got to see the full direction of where they're going. The trade is better for the Hornets because he is getting paid $12 million and he's going to fit this system well for what they're trying to do. But also if he do walk, you get $12 million off your books. So instead of just having Noah Vonley, who you don't know what he's going to turn out to, you get a player that you know what you're going to get and what he can bring to the table right away. But you is paying on $12 million, which can leave him off the books next year because he'd be back a free agent. So the trade works more for the Hornets. And I don't know what Portland, what direction they're going in with this trade. But like I said, this trade hurts keeping LaMarcus Aldridge unless they bring in somebody bigger to replace Nicholas Batum, and that attracts LaMarcus to stay. Like I said, they already got Aaron Aflalo, so but he's not as versatile as Nicholas Batum. So they're going to have to find a three to play Nick Batum position. And same with the Hornets. They got to figure out what they're going to do with the two position because Michael kidd Grilkis cannot stretch out the floor. He still can't shoot after the couple years he's been in the league. And we already know Kimba Walker is – not a reliable shooter from the three-point order mid-range. He shoots under 45% every season from 39 to 40%. He's not really a franchise-changing player himself. Al Jefferson is an all-NBA player, but the supporting cast that he has in the Hornets don't look that good. But if it does work out, if they add more pieces with Batum, Kimba, Gilchrist, and Jefferson, that's a good core but they're going to have to add another big piece to make them a contender in the East. Because this trade, like I said, makes them a chance to make the playoffs an eight or a seven seed. But with Nicholas Batum, it's not going to change them into a championship contender. So we're going to have to see what both teams do in the offseason and in the draft to fill their holes in their positions. And I'll re-update you when they make another trade or if they make another free agent signing. I'm going to cover it all this whole summer from draft. I'm going to give you the grades and everything. And from the draft grades to the free agency signing, you know, hot topic. I'm here 24-7 covering the NBA. So let me know what you guys think. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. And like I said, this trade is still developing. But we got to see the future trades that the Hornets and the Portland Trailblazers going to make to make these trades validated.